Elon Musk is taking things to a new level when it comes to transportation. If he gets his way, you'll soon be able to take a train from New York City to Washington DC in about 30 minutes. Or if you're on the West Coast, you could go from LA to San Francisco in about 35. The Hyperloop is a train type vehicle which has these pods that travel through a vacuum sealed tube. The technology is really just based on a couple other technologies that have been around for more than a century now. The basic way it works is a segment of the train or pod is contained in a tube that has practically no air left in it. Now the train itself is suspended using magnetic levitation. This comes from an old idea called a vac train, which is also based on another type of train that actually does exist called maglev for magnetic levitation. Maglev trains do not make contact with the ground and use their magnets for both lift and propulsion. This reduces friction and allows the train to travel at extremely high speeds, by today's standards anyways. The problem with maglev trains is that they still have air that causes friction and slows them down because they're outside of a tube, they're out in the open. Now this all reminds me of the pneumatic tubes people used to send short messages throughout buildings over 100 years ago. In fact, the idea of sending people through pneumatic tubes isn't new. The first patent to transport goods in tubes was taken out in 1799 by the British mechanical engineer and inventor George Medhurst. In 1812, Medhurst wrote a book detailing his idea of transporting passengers and goods through airtight tubes using air propulsion. Even the first attempt to build an underground transit system in New York City was based on this technology. It was called the Beach Pneumatic Transit. So this idea isn't really new, it's just that Elon's new company, the Boring Company as he calls it, is making it economically feasible due to their advancements in tunneling as well as other advancements in air propulsion. So who cares? Is this really a thing? Well, yes, yes it is. Elon Musk recently tweeted out his boring company received approval to build a tunnel from New York City to Washington DC. Now this would people get them from city center to city center in about 29 minutes. At roughly 226 miles between New York and DC, that means they would have to travel near 450 miles per hour on average. That's pretty fast. However, it's not as fast as the initial design put out by the SpaceX and Tesla team back in 2013. In their paper published in August of 2013, they proposed a route between SF and LA that would get passengers there in about 35 minutes. To achieve this, they would need an average speed of 600 miles per hour. That's almost a thousand kilometers an hour and a top speed of 760 miles per hour. Until his latest tweet, it wasn't clear that any of Elon's companies or he himself was gonna be pursuing Hyperloop. They open sourced their designs and hosted competitions to encourage others to build companies to do this. Meanwhile, he was running Tesla and SpaceX and doing all these other things. So now it seems like at least the boring company is going to be digging the tunnels. Who knows whether or not they'll actually be installing the Hyperloops themselves. SpaceX is helping develop this technology, however, by hosting competitions. In January 2017, SpaceX offered its Hyperloop transportation services to 27 teams from across the country and world in the first Hyperloop pod competition at the SpaceX track. The competition's goal is to accelerate the development of functional prototypes and encourage innovation by challenging teams to design and build the best high-speed pod. Teams put their pods through a litany of tests, which was made possible by their Hyperloop system. This competition was the first of its kind anywhere in the world. Based on the high quality submissions and overwhelming enthusiasm surrounding the first competition, SpaceX has moved forward with the Hyperloop Pod Competition 2, which will culminate in a second competition on August 25th through 27th of 2017. Now this is also going to be held at the SpaceX Hyperloop track up in Hawthorne near Los Angeles. Hyperloop Competition 2 focuses on a single criterion, maximum speed. The competition will include new and returning student teams, some of which have already built and tested their pods during the first competition. Several companies have sprung up that are looking to use the Hyperloop design and create this new form of mass transit, the most popular of which is called Hyperloop One. And Hyperloop One recently made history with their full-scale system test run in Nevada. At this instant, they achieved controlled propulsion and levitation in their production scale vacuum environment. This was a short test, but an important one if this technology is ever to become a reality. 
The skate they built only went for about five seconds, yet it achieved the magnetic levitation in a pressurized tube, something never done before. So what's next? Well, if Elon gets his way, the boring company is gonna start digging tunnels. They'll be winning federal and state and local contracts to make this possible. And then companies like Hyperloop One will install them. So there's a lot of things that still need to happen, but the fact that Elon is tweeting about it is a positive sign for the rest of us that one day this may become a reality. Bloomberg reported that a person close to Musk said his plan is to build the entire thing, including the Hyperloop system. Musk also holds a trademark for Hyperloop through SpaceX, which could be used to prevent other companies from using the term, according to US public records. Now this is some next level stuff that could seriously disrupt air travel as it'll be almost as fast, or in some cases, potentially faster, plus safer, more convenient, and hopefully one day cheaper. A big outstanding question is if this will really change things much for the daily commuter. An Italian physicist, Cesare Marchetti, came up with this notion that we all spend about an hour traveling every day, regardless of our mode of transportation. His theory came from transportation analyst and engineer Yaakov Zahav, who studied this going back to ancient Greece, where people would commute across the city on foot. The cities then were built just big enough that it would take about 30 minutes to walk across the city each way, meaning that the average commute for a person was probably around 30 minutes even back then. So what do you think? Is this pure science fiction or do you think this is a good idea? I'd love to know your thoughts. Please leave me a comment down below. So thanks for watching and don't forget to click subscribe if you're new here. You can also get on our email list at tazonomics.co. And lastly, remember, when you free the data, your mind will follow.